Okay, welcome back to our our series of pencast proofs of uh, and Young's geometry. Uh, this is part two, uh, and as as I promised last time, I'm reducing the statements of the axioms to uh, simple pictures of them. Uh, and you'll notice also that I've included one for proposition one, uh, because once we have proved uh, a result, we can we are free to use that result in proving later results. So just to give a re quick recap, axiom one of Young's geometry said that there exists a line in the geometry. Axiom two says that every line has exactly three points on it. Axiom three says that um, not all the points in the geometry are on a given line. So if I have a line, I know I can find a point elsewhere. Axiom 4 says given any two distinct points in the geometry, there must be some line that contains both of those points. And Axiom 5 says that if you have a point that is not contained on a given line, then there is some line that contains that point uh, that does not intersect with the given line. <clears throat> okay. Um... Oh, and I just wanted to emphasize in our picture of axiom four that there is exactly one point, or exactly one line that contains those two. Okay, and proposition one was the, the proposition we just proved that said if you have a point, then there exists some line that does not contain that point. Okay, shiny. All right, proposition two is what we're moving on to next. Proposition two says that for every point in the geometry, there are at least four lines on that point. So if, we, if you're given a point, there must be four, at least four lines uh, in the geometry that contain that point. Okay, so why? Why must this be true? Okay. Uh, we're going to start in a similar way. Uh, proposition 1 said, uh, similarly said, for every point. Um, and so our approach is, assume we have some point in the geometry and uh, see what the axioms and the propositions tell us about this point. Okay. Um, now, the it, when we proved proposition 1, the very first thing we did was we, we began with axiom 1 and said, there's a line somewhere. Um, but uh, actually, in this case, it's going to be more advantageous to use Proposition 1. That way, the line that we get, um, we can actually, we know from the beginning that it doesn't contain the point P. Okay, so from Proposition 1, we know that there is some line, L, uh, that does not contain P. So by Prop 1... There exists an L that does not contain P. Okay, uh, and I, I hope this notation is familiar. This backwards E, this just is shorthand for there exists. Okay, so we have a line L. It doesn't contain the point P. So what? Uh, what can we say about this line L? Well, axiom 2 says that there are exactly three points on this. Okay, so there are three points on this line. Let's uh, be creative and call them P1, P2, and P3. Okay, so axiom two says three points here. Okay, P1, P2, and P3. Okay, and these have to be distinct points because L has three distinct points on it, okay? Uh, if P1 and P2 were equal, then there should be some other point somewhere else, uh, and our labels would have been um, ill-conceived. So we have three points, P1, P2, and P3, that lie on this line L, and since uh, P is not contained on this line L, P is actually distinct from P1, P2, and P3. Uh, this is important because... Axiom 4 says that there's a line between P1 and P, 
because P1 and P are distinct points, so there must be a line that contains it. Uh, axiom 2, or ac the same axiom, says that there's a line that contains P2 and P, and that there must be a line also that contains P3 and P. Now, uh, it, it's sort of a subtle thing, but uh, we need to show that uh, these are three distinct lines. So let me finish my thought. Axiom 4 says that there are lines between P and P1, P2, P3. Okay. Y distinct. Okay, and this is this was one of the pitfalls in a in the proof set one. Um, why must these three lines? Why must this actually be three lines? Uh, how do we know that they don't overlap? Well, if this line that contained P1 and P also contained P2, for instance, then we would have one line that contains P1 and P2 and P, and we would have a different line that contains P1 and P2 and not P. Uh, but then that would mean that there would be there would be two lines that contain both P1 and P2. But axiom four uh, says that there can only be one line that contains both of those points, and that line is clearly L. Uh, so it, it couldn't possibly be that these three lines are somehow, uh, that, that they somehow coincide. So why are they distinct? If not, we get a contradiction to axiom uh, four. Okay, so right now we've started with the point P, we've constructed, we've figured out that there's a line that doesn't contain P, that line contains points P1, P2, and P3, uh, and each of those points gives us a line uh, that goes through P. So right now we're up to three distinct lines that contain the point P. Uh, and to get our fourth, we're going to invoke axiom five, which says that since P is not on the line L, there must be some line through P that doesn't intersect with L. Uh, and we're going to call this L prime. Now, since L prime doesn't intersect with L, this must be a completely different line than these three lines we started with. So uh, we have one, two, three, four lines that go through P. that's good enough to show that there are at least four lines that go through P. As it turns out, this is going to be it, uh, but that's a proof for a later time. So now let's write out our careful proof. Okay, so our, we first started with uh, letting P be any point in the geometry. At this point, again, we we are we it is understood that we're talking about Young's geometry because these are proofs in Young's geometry. Okay, um, so let P be a point in the geometry. We're going to somehow argue that there are at least four lines on this. Okay, uh, remember our, the first thing we did was invoke proposition one to say that there is some line L. Okay, so by proposition one, there exists some line L that does not contain P. Okay. So we've established that this L exists, uh, and what did we do next? Well, we showed that there were, we argued that there were three points on that, uh, and that came from axiom two. By axiom two, L must 
must contain exactly three points. Well, let's go ahead and establish our notation. Let P1, P2, and P3 be the points on L. Okay? Since P is not on L, P is distinct from each of the points P1, P2, and P3. This is what allows us to invoke Axiom 4, insisting that there must be a line containing those. Okay. Um, axiom 4 guarantees that there is exactly one line that contains P and P1. Uh, and let's go ahead and introduce a name for this line. We're going to call it L1. Axiom 4 also states that there exists exactly one line L2 that contains P and P2. We note that L One cannot be equal to L2 otherwise L and L1 would both contain P1 and P2. This contradicts axiom 4. Okay. Uh, similarly, there exists a line L3 containing P and P3. Okay. <clears throat> Finally, note that Axiom 5 guarantees that there exists a line L prime containing P that does not intersect L. Therefore, we have constructed four lines that contain P 
and we win.